Uh, let's turn to some other news. The UK Chancellor Jeremy Hunt delivering the government's spring budget today in Parliament. Uh, in that speech, he struck an optimistic tone, laying out his plans to pull the economy out of the doldrums. Today, the Office for Budget Responsibility forecasts that because of changing international factors and the measures I take, the UK will not now enter a technical recession this year. They forecast we will meet the Prime Minister's priorities to halve inflation, reduce debt and get the economy growing. We are following the plan and the plan is working. Now, after of course Liz Truss, this is a government that wants to be cautious. But was that optimistic enough? Was it bold enough? Normally, chancellors in this situation try and find a few rabbits. There were rabbits missing in action today. Let's go to Westminster. Bloomberg's Lizzie Burton joins us now from there. Lizzie, was this a missed opportunity? Well, I have to say that the atmosphere in Westminster is very different to after the mini budget. It's not uh, a feeling of shock. You're not seeing uh, the pound tanking in the same way, but not, it's really in markets not about the budget today as it's about banks. But is it a missed opportunity? I mean, you still you saw the Chancellor there saying that the UK is going to avoid a technical recession, but it's still going to contract. I mean, he focused on growth. He said it was a budget for growth. Uh, he tried to incentivise investment. He's trying to lure workers back to the workforce. The big moments were when he said about pension reform, abolishing the lifetime pension allowance. Not quite a rabbit out of a hat. It was leaked, but it was more generous than expected on childcare reform. This is something that economists have been calling for. We had uh, former Bank of England policymaker Michael Saunders on the UK politics programme telling us how it would boost labour market uh, participation, boost growth, help with the gender pay gap. But there are still questions that linger on it. For example, it's going to be introduced in stages until September 2025. Mm -hmm. Is that trying to bait voters into holding on to the Conservatives until then? Economists at the Office for budget responsibility just now hinting that perhaps it'll do more to keep working parents who are already working uh, working more than luring people who are not working into the workforce so questions linger and I'd just finally say on the city um, we're going to have to wait till April uh, autumn to find out how the government is going to match the US's inflation reduction act so we might have lost more arms before then um, also what I found interesting Lizzie um, is it there's it's just a super small buffer um, for uh, Hunt to meet his own fiscal rules as debt as a percentage of GDP, meaning that if anything goes wrong, there's just no room to maneuver, right? If, if the global economy gets hit again, if the UK economy gets hit again in a more specific way. What was your key takeaway from that? Yeah, I was just listening to the Office for Budget Responsibilities press conference and what Richard Hughes, the chair, really wanted to stress was the volatility, as you say, going forward, the, the uncertainty of the situation. Uh, and in terms of the margins to, uh, a, a, to pass the fiscal rules, uh, he said it's wafer thin, partly because of um, the assumption that the freeze of fuel duty is temporary. Temporary, but we've had it for 10 years. Uh, uh, and so this seems to be how the government uh, is just uh, slipping in to meeting its own rules.